WORT 89.9 FM, Madison. Good morning, and welcome to Her her Turn. I'm Sandy Janigold. I do have a guest today, a live guest. I'm still not in the studio, but luckily our engineer, Shelly Pittman, is there. And so I'm able to talk to our guest, who is Gabrielle Javier Cerulli. She is a community artist with Dane Arts Mural Arts and has over 20 years of arts programming and facilitation experience. She has a Master of Arts degree in Expressive Arts Therapy and Mental Health Counseling and is the author of Art Journal, Your Archetypes. Gabrielle is a mixed media artist of abstract expressionism, assemblage, collage, fiber arts, and upcycled art forms. Her public art pro- projects include Flamingo Wings, an interactive street art installation in downtown Madison. Good morning, Gabrielle. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Sandy. This is such an honor. I love the show. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, after reading all that, now how about if you tell us what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, like, like many artists, I wear a variety of hats, um, but currently I am a community artist with Dane Arts, Mural Arts. Uh, that means we uh, work with community groups and schools, community organizations, neighborhood associations, and businesses throughout Dane County. Um, which, and then we work with these groups to facilitate an art-making experience or create an interior or exterior mural uh, with them. And these can be of all sizes and shapes. Um, we do small ones to big ones. And like I said, interior, exterior. It's actually a one of three that's going to end up on the side of the Madison Youth Art Center building uh, downtown. It's about, I think it's like 20 by 28 feet. Wow. Uh, that's a big one. And um, the first one comes up this summer. And then I think... The plan is for the next two, over the next two years. And on that, that was really exciting. So we worked with uh, some young kids organizations and the high school, uh, alternative high schools. So they have um, some of their designs and patterns and mark making pieces that's going to end up on this uh, mural uh, because we have hand painted but you know, transferred their marks onto this. They, we, uh, and we've also done some printmaking on there as well. It's, we're busy. And we also, we, we partner with um, Ripple Effects, uh, which is a Dane County organization, to uh, do storm drains throughout Dane County, um, paint the storm drains around the storm drains as an educational piece. <laughs> yes, it is. So how does this fit in with um, the last year and the pandemic? I'm thinking especially of people's mental health and depression. And for, Well, for the mural making, um, a lot, with, like, well, <laughs> For me personally, like a lot, all of my facilitation was put on hold, like going into detention center, uh, mm-hmm. all my uh, art classes were all put on hold. Mm-hmm. Dama was, you know, lucky enough that we had some big projects that we could do in the shop. Um, and our shop is located like over on Stoughton Road by... Um, it's on Alice, A-L-L-I-S Street. Um, so over that part of town, it's big enough that uh, we could work on some projects there that could then be moved to uh, different buildings. Uh, so it definitely slowed down over the pandemic because people weren't sure. Because, you know, how we differ from other mural organizations is we do a lot of community engagement. And that was... Uh, all on hold for a while, as you can guess. Um, but now, so people have all their projects from last summer folding into this summer and all of the new projects. Uh, so that's, um, that makes for a busy summer for us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're doing exterior, it's always, uh, 
Uh, you know, yeah, you, you, Mother Nature has to yep. uh, play well with us. <laughs> so. Yeah. So how does someone get a mural done? Uh, contact Dane Arts Mural Arts. That's the w- way to start. Um, either face, they have a Facebook page. Uh, go to the website. There's there's contact information there, and either Veronica or Alicia will um, respond to their request. Okay, and one of the things you have said is the use of collages. Um, you say it's an especially good technique for those with language barriers or disabilities, or for those who freeze when presented with a blank page. Because um, very early on, I learned that the blank page is very scary for a lot of people. Um, Cause I'm usually where I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an art teacher. So I'm not teaching like a, a acrylic technique. It's, it's mostly working with people who are not, who do not call themselves artists. So a blank page is very scary. So when I first started, I was using a lot of acrylic paint and that uh, made people very uncomfortable and um, it didn't get to any real process. They were just so hung up on if they were doing it right. Because a lot of people have art making trauma, it slows people's process, creative process down and they can't really exercise their creative right. self. So most popular classes, of course, before the pandemic was taking a hardcover book and making that into an art journal. And so collage is part of that. Poetry is part of that. And people really like that because one, they're upcycling. And two, it's um, the, there's already printed pages. So there's it's not blank. So they they feel a little more comfortable with that. Um, It's amazing how you can find images that just really speak to you. I've never had a participant ever say, none of these images work for me. You know, there's (laughs) always a beautiful thing to watch as well as as they're collecting their little um, mysterious images of why it speaks to them at that moment. Because who knows, you know, like a year from now, that might not mean anything to them. But at that moment... Um, that image or those images mean something, which is pretty powerful. Yes. In case you just joined us, I'm talking with Gabrielle Javier Cerulli. How about I give you another one? Okay. Actually, um, my colleague on the her turn, Arlene Zaucha, is the one that that had seen your presentation. Oh, so, okay. So the a couple of these things that you had said really spoke to her and one of the other things was um, change through the arts and how do you see that happening oh I mean I I don't think I have to convince anybody who's listening to this that people get transformed by any kind of art making experience and and I mean I speak mostly from the visual arts but you know engage in music or dance or theater uh but in even even if it's just to relax and have fun there's a transformation there there's a um uh something that your body craves when people are making art and so those are like the the little t transformations just relaxation mindfulness um but i've seen because you know i again i went to school for art therapy not fine art um, so I've seen the big T transformation. And also I see the big T transformation with communities uh, when, when a mural, when they come together to create a mural and there's so much pride and there's so much community building and there's people meeting um, and there's um, just a wonderful sense of, you know, family community uh, that happens. So those are the big T transformations. Um but in my class, when I run workshops or facilitate classes, I see those big T transformation uh, things come up that people aren't aware of or like they're blocking and some things get unblocked. Oh, geez. Well, when I work with the adolescents in detention center, there's there's a, like big T and little T transformation because they are teenagers. But mm-hmm. it uh, really meant something to him. So, again, is that a big is that a big transformation, a little transformation? It, who knows? But it he, he, without giving him the opportunity it it uh now it has come out and it now he can look at that and his family can see that um his school can see that the the detention center can see that that there is a goal 
uh, that happened within 10 minutes of me just giving some um, free materials that would end up in, you know, recycling or garbage, uh, which transformed, you know, which allowed this child to uh, create something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And are there any local female artists whose work you like and or that you work with? There are so many. Um, Gosh, off the top of my head. Well, at Dane Arts Mural Arts, there's Alicia Real, R-H-E-A-L. She's an accomplished muralist. Uh, She's the production manager. She does portraits and pet portraits. Uh, There's Audifacts. A-U-D-I-F-A-X. She's a muralist as well and a street artist. Helen Klebicidal, uh, Klebicidal, uh, she does watercolors. She teaches watercolors. Uh, she also does creativity classes. We're supposed to do something together sometime. Um, there's a local art therapist, another local art therapist, uh, Sarah Jordan, who does mosaics herself, but also sh- that's how she does her community Art making experiences is with mosaics, and they're fantastic. They, they uh, Babette Wainwright. That's and I just I just learned about her pottery from that um, round table. Uh, she's yeah. a, she's a potter. Uh, never met her, but her pieces are so moving. Um, Linda Berry. I love her stuff. They're so funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, her cartoons. <laughs> her mm-hmm. and um, her books. Uh, I would love, I've never met her, but I would love to meet her. Um, yeah, she's, she's, uh, I, I like her style. Um, Christy Grace, she's a young local artist. Uh, she does sweet pieces and some wearable pieces like jewelry. Um, gosh, Yvette Pino, she's also, she does printmaking and murals. So uh, speaking of printmaking, there's Leslie Numbers. She does great work. I mean, like, I could just keep going and going. Yes. So if somebody's listening to this show and and they feel like working on something would really be meaningful and helpful for them, what would you suggest their first step be? With me or they're on their own? Uh, with anyone. Oh, get on you if if they have access, get on YouTube and uh and you know, art, art journaling is usually an inexpensive, non-threatening, easy way to start. Um, again, my art journaling class is usually you start with all the materials you probably already have in your house. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, you know when, when the um, live classes start that I would do that because like wheelhouse has some really great classes and they're they're not crazy expensive. I mean, there's classes all over. Um, and I'm always more of a proponent of, of like in person kind of thing. I mean, I'm a programming person, so, you know, all this online stuff is okay, but I, I like to actually, uh, be with the people. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would start is just simple art journaling. I mean, instead of like getting like I have, you know, giant pieces of canvas and uh, other things here, I would not start that way. It's, it might be intimidating to people and it can be expensive. <laughs> yes. OK. Art journaling. And part of that would be doing a collage also. Oh, yeah, that's that. Yeah. With collaging. Um, again, you can go on Etsy to get your collage materials but you can also just get get free magazines from like craigslist free cycle your neighborhood associations doctor well i don't know about doctors yeah. <laughs> anymore <laughs> libraries library because they have to um shed their their old uh magazines and that's a great way and also it's a it's the other thing with collage is like any age and i've done collage with pre-k to seniors in memory care um, and it's it's been fantastic. I also have done that with painting, but <laughs> ah. <laughs> so someone said you could dumpster dive for magazines. I don't think you have to do that. But um, oh, also sometimes you get magazines in those little free libraries. 
<clears throat> yes, yes. Well, all of those sound like wonderful ideas. Um, and we're winding down right now. So, Gabrielle, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Yeah, for so coming up this summer, I'm going to be part of a, co- a cohort of artists in residency with the Bubbler with uh, the uh, Madison Public Library. Uh, it's a new artist in residency fellowship program with multiple artists working on community projects uh, that will be coming this summer and fall. They're de- they're finalizing the details. I'm also judging an art show at the Manitou Art sh- um, Art Show in in July in Manitowash waters up north. Hmm. And that's very exciting because I get to see over a hundred pieces of art live. And um, my big goal for the summer is to somehow start a women's art making exploration creativity group. Um, I might even have some funding for it, but I need to find groups or people to collaborate with. So if anybody has any ideas, feel free to contact me. Um, and how do you contact me? Uh, LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I uh, say that's, I'm the worst at social media. <laughs> um, and um, about dot me slash Gabrielle JC. I think I'm on there. You could contact me that way. Um, but you'll find me or contact me through Dane Arts. That's the other thing. Dane Arts, Mural Arts. Okay. On Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook. Okay. Well, that all sounds very exciting. And it was wonderful to talk to you. Oh, it was so, so nice of you to have me. So I'm hoping we will talk to you again soon. We'll certainly be looking for your work around town. It sounds very exciting. Yes, 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 yes. So I, thank- um, yeah. So thank Maybe you I'll very see you in much. Maybe I'll see you in one of my classes. <laughs> You know, that's probably a good idea. (laughs) That would be great. So that was Gabrielle Javier Cerulli, a community artist with Dane Arts Mural Arts. Um, And we've been talking about all of the things that she's been doing with art. And uh, I wish you a great summer. And I hope that we do get to go out and see lots of people this summer. Thank you so much. Thank you.